Hello guys, welcome to Radiology Urea YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about three kind of fractures including pathological fractures, stress fractures and insufficiency fractures. Pathological fracture occurs where substantially minor force is required to cause a fracture in a weakened bone. So minor force over weakened bone. Usually this term is reserved for tumors either benign or malignant. You can be used this in the setting of osteomyelitis. And the most common locations are subtrochanteric femur, humeral head and metaphyseal junction and vertebral body. In addition to this, in adult patient, avulsion of femoral laser trochanter should be considered a pathological fracture until proven otherwise. There is a subcategory of banana fracture. This is a pathological fracture tend to be oriented transversely within the long bones and the causes for pathological fractures can be metastatic disease or benign tumors including enchondroma, solitary bone cyst and Paget disease, renal osteodystrophy or osteogenesis imperfecta. Now we are going to talk about stress fractures. This is also called as fatigue fracture. These fractures occur in the bone due to a mismatch of bone strength and chronic repetitive mechanical stress placed upon a normal bone. There are multiple known risk factors including being a female, low bone density, nutritional disorders or deficiencies, female athlete triad, long distance running, inappropriate short recovery time, training changes and inadequate shoes. The clinical presentation of stress fracture usually with a worsening pain with the history of minimal or no trauma. And this type of fracture is more common in athletes, especially among runners and military recruits. And stress fractures occur more common in women and older people. When you're considering about the etiology, fatigue fractures occur due to abnormal stresses on normal bone and insufficiency fractures occur with normal stress on abnormal bone. So that's how you can divide this kind of fracture. The common sites of stress fractures are lower limb than upper limb. This includes metatarsal shaft, especially March fractures, then pubic rami, femoral neck, tibial and fibular shaft, calcaneal tuberosity, padella and pars intercularis of lumbar spine. When considering radiograph findings of a stress fracture, the plain x-rays are poor sensitivity in detecting stress fractures and during the first few weeks after the onset of symptoms, x-rays may look normal and it may take up to two weeks to be detectable fracture line. So, what are the positive findings of a stress fracture in an x-ray? You can see grey cortex sign. This is subtle loss of cortical density in early stage stress injury. And you can see increase in sclerosis or cortical thickening along the fracture site. And you can see the periosteal reaction or elevation. You can use the nuclear medicine to identify the fatigue fractures. You can notice there may be a focus of increased activity or hot spot. This is due to increased bone turnover at the site of newborn formation at fracture site. But this is non-specific. You can see similar changes due to osteomyelitis, bone tumor or even with avascular necrosis. Other imaging modality is CT. The findings are similar to plain radiography. This includes sclerosis, newborn formation, periosteal reaction and fracture lines in long bones. MRI is the most sensitive modality for stress fractures. You can see the periosteal or adjacent soft tissue edema, band-like bone marrow edema and T1 hypointense fracture line you can evident in high grade injury. When considering treatment and prognosis of stress fractures, you can manage conservatively with analgesics, ice, reduce weight bearing and modification of activities until pain resolves. When considering differential diagnosis of fatigue fractures, you have to think about osteosarcoma and bone tumors. These can also present with periosteal reaction and second one is osteomyelitis. In osteomyelitis, you can see the bone marrow edema and soft tissue swelling. And the third differential is soft tissue bruises. In these cases, you can see edema at the injury site, but little or no marrow abnormalities. The next category is insufficiency fractures. This is caused by normal activity on abnormal bone. Generally, insufficiency fractures you can see in elderly more frequently in women. 
women. Etiologies can be osteoporosis, disrupted bone mineral hemostasis like hyperparathyroidism, diabetes, and osteomalacia, and bone remodeling conditions including Paget disease, osteoporosis, and collagen formation abnormalities as example Marfan syndromes and fibrous dysplasia. And you can see the insufficiency fractures also with some medications including glucocorticoids and chemotherapy. And radiation therapy also cause insufficiency fractures. When considering the locations, major locations of insufficiency fractures, vertebra. These can be either crushed or wet fractures. These are very common and marrow edema is limited to the vertebral body. And you can see the extension of abnormal signal into pedicle. This suggests underlying lesion. And other locations of insufficiency fractures are sacrum. You can see the Honda sign there. Neck of femur. Proximal third of femur. Pubic rema, sternum, fibula and tibia. Initial plane radiograph can be normal. And you can see the periosteal reaction progress into callus formation in diaphyseal fractures. And you can see the linear sclerosis and cortical thickening. These are more frequent in metaphyseal and epiphyseal fractures. The MRI is sensitive as bone scanning and you can see the low marrow signal in T1, high marrow signal in T2. These changes extend into the adjacent soft tissues and in contrast enhanced uh, MRI sequences, you can see the intense enhancement even. When considering nuclear medicine, you can see the increased activity at the site of fracture and treatment and prognosis of insufficiency fractures depends on the location and the completeness of the fracture. It can be conservative with plaster cast or internal fixation, vertebroplasty, hyperplasty, and you have to consider about treatment of underlying cause of bone weakness. So today we discuss about pathological fractures, stress fractures, and insufficiency fractures. If you like the video, you can like it, comment it, and share among your friends. And if you are not subscribed yet, you can subscribe the channel. We will see you soon with our next video. Until then, goodbye.